Welcome to the Remake Podcast. I'm Matt. What's up? I'm Brad. Is this the thing we're doing? We're going in a circle? We're not going in a circle. It guys. was clearly not a circle. Michelle. Yeah. Michelle. And <laughs> Jeremy here. This is our second episode. Thank you guys for everyone who listened to the first one. And now we're going to uh, start the second one off with some Star Wars news. Except we kind of got to watch the trailer because one of us hasn't watched it. Oh yeah, I haven't seen it. Yo, one sec. Can we get this on the TV? No, it'll take too long. Fuck. Well, Michelle hasn't watched it either, so you gotta put it on the table. I watched one part of it, and I was Budget. Blessed. This is... This is music? Not Rise of Skywalker, this is it's episode no. 4. It's pan... well, it's pandering. They did yeah, it the same thing with the Revenge of the Sith. We liked it. Well, they did the same thing with the Revenge of the Sith teaser, but they do it a lot They more. did it very differently. Remember when Star Wars was good? They're really, like, shoving it down our throats. Yeah, they're just showing the highlight reel. Oh, Kylo Ren's so cool. He's now wet. There's a lot of fighting. Motherfucker, that came CG! Yes, it's it's fine. There's no reflection of it! <laughs> what the fuck? The clickbait part. <laughs> okay, I'm not gonna lie. I, the clickbait's got me. I want it. I what want kind it. of stupid design lightsaber is that? Imagine all of a sudden you just pull it down. Oh, there goes my leg. Fuck. Are you kidding me? Oh. If you want to talk about, oh, pull right. it down, there goes my leg. Look I'm at my Darth Maul. Anyways, Ma all right, so oh. what's our impression? Are they of just this putting so that in there because people like Darth Maul? So like, let's play on something else that they used to like. Darth Maul saber never folded. Yeah, but it was a double-ended lightsaber. People love their double-ended yeah, lightsaber, but right. it, it never folded. It did, yeah. No, this obviously, is it didn't admittedly fold. Think about twice as long now, though. Design choice on a lightsaber. The more moving parts, the more likely the fatality this going to be. <laughs> just all of a sudden, it just starts up. It's, it's, it's not any longer. I don't care, it's stupid. Like, in the handle, it's still the same. No, dude, that's each, twice the each, length! Each saber needs the same amount of crystal space. Those double sabers are not the same as a single right. handle. Watch when it extends. It is almost twice as long in the middle as Maul's was. Maul, was, from here, was about this much spacing. That one's like... His was longer. A than fucking two by before. four before the lightsaber starts. Anyway, remember when J.J. Abrams said, "Fuck it, I'm gonna do whatever with this movie." Yeah, I think he just. <laughs> I think that was it. From the creators of Lost, all your questions will be answered. But not. Fuck. I'll bet you that whole dark grace is just. It's in totally a dream clickbait. Or something. It's just yeah. not even happening. There's no yeah, way. Or it'll be right at the beginning of the movie, and she'll wake up and oh my god. The only way that I would be happy with Ray actually going to the dark side, in that trailer, is she legitimately goes to the dark side. No, it's reverting bullshit. I want to see a full on. There's no fucking Jedi left. It's just the Sith, and what? it's Ray. Everything that's been established, you can't. It, 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 there's no point. You had that opportunity with the last movie, but she cast that aside. Yeah. We've basically been shown that Ray is an incorruptible character. Yeah. Because she's perfect. Mary Sue. Of course she's perfect. That's she's stupid. written to be perfect. Yeah, How does a perfect it. character? What does anyone feel about the Emperor coming back? I think. Did you heard his voice in it, right? I think they're no. just still also I, kind of trying to play on nostalgia. What are the odds? They're just going to pull an end game and yeah. just go into the past to try and fix the future. And that's where Palpatine comes back. <laughs> Thanos style. It makes no <laughs> sense. It makes literally no sense. So, I mean, we can have Hatman go and up the anus. It's made a lot so of sense can... so far, though. I trust again. The no. first... Force Awakens in, was okay. It wasn't good, though. It, it, it definitely... Force Awakens was like a soft reboot, and people mm -hmm. were like, oh, let's see where this goes, and then Ryan Johnson just, like, took an epic dump all over it. He's like, this is my fan fiction. <laughs> <laughs> and then J.J. Abrams came back, he's like, what's going on? Ah! And I was trying to wipe off all the shit that's all over the place, and he's like, ah, oh, it's still recoverable, we can do this. Sorry, Kathleen Kennedy, you're gonna make some money, but... Oh. I don't know. Well, that, I <laughs> wipe and I wipe and I wipe, but still poop. Yeah. Still poop. JJ did write out a rough plot line for the episode 8 and episode 9, and apparently Which Rian Johnson looked line. at 8 and was like, yeet! And <laughs> Kathleen Kennedy's like, yeah, that's a good idea. Kathleen that Kennedy's apparently... like, is there a Star Wars in there? And he's like, yeah, there's a Star Wars. It's like, yeah, approved. Apparently she said that it's been the plan the whole time that the Emperor is going to come back in Episode 9. How they're uh -huh. going to make it work is 
going to be some contrived bullshit. Clone so Chambers. Is he just going to be through all nine movies? Then? It's actually funny you say that. So oh, real quick. I think, I, okay, so this is how J.J. Abrams is going to solve all the issues. So uh, who's the who's the, who's the the red herring in eight, seven and eight? Snoke. He's a poorly created clone that of Emperor Palpatine that didn't quite work out, and so the more perfected ones coming back in nine saying, "Oh, that was me all along." I definitely Some prefer the Snoke theory like that. that he was a youngling. Definitely prefer that. What? Well, I was really hoping for Darth Jar Jar. I don't even know what's gonna happen. But <laughs> I don't even want to pretend to know because I I I don't. All right, to the comics. The reason why I bring these up is because these were originally the first major comics, anyways, that talked about what happened after the events of uh, Return of the Jedi. Is this the Royal Guards in it? Uh, kind of. No, that's no. Prince of Empire. Yeah. This yeah. one did have the Emperor coming back through the clone theory. He just had, had different bodies, and he was his Force his, Spirit. Would yeah, was going into clones. different bodies. This one, in particular also had a spaceship that could shoot across galaxies and blow up planets, which at the time when this was released, people thought it was absurd. And then <laughs> Force Awakens literally has it as the Starkiller base. So the comic book series that has kind of been renowned for Wait, what was the name of the super like... weapon? Sorry? What was the name of the super weapon? Oh, it was a big spaceship. It's always called something. Oh. Are... Empire is known for super weapons. They all have super names. They don't say it on the back here. I'll find it. If you want to look for it. Okay, you tell me. I'll, I'll find it. So, Pluto Renamer. This, you are no longer a planet. <laughs> this series had a lot of people kind of talking ill of it because of how ridiculous it was, yet these two comics... Galaxy Gun. Was, the Galaxy Gun. The Galaxy Gun. Are you serious? That was wow. fast. Yep. Wow, Jeremy. You're looking real unprofessional. I haven't read this in like <laughs> eight years. I recognized it, and I was like, oh, it's probably in here. Anyways... The series that had the most amount of flack about it has been Galaxy borrowed Man? the most so far <laughs> from all previously written material before yeah. the whole legend stuff. Does anyone have any positive or any sort of hopes for this movie? That the, the Skywalker saga will end for good? I would like, <laughs> I would like the Skywalkers to be over. What I would That's like to see hope. them do is Old Republic. Well, they that are doing that cool. with, you know, the two the people who really did Game of Thrones, including um, season eight. Yep. Well, that's going to go well. What about Luke? He kind of double died in the last movie. Yeah, he'll come back. As a ghost. As a ghost. But that don't make him. he can triple die. Well, no, so he can have more screen time. And J.J. Abrams can somewhat redeem him, maybe. Maybe. Because uh, otherwise Mark Hamill's going to die a salty old man. Well, we already saw that Yoda has the ability to control lightning yeah. in Last Jedi, so all Luke has to come and be like, hey, Kylo, and just electrocute him. Yeah, no, a lot of a lot of issues in Star Wars can be solved with violence. Oh. General. General. That was well, everybody like has kind of the same. Right. Yoda! So this is a new section that we're going to add to the reviews. This is Yoda, You Ask, where we have this overpriced talking Yoda doll. And we're going to ask him what he thinks of the Star Wars movies. Mm, a question you will ask! It's, that, it's not even, there's no batteries. Oh yeah, he has batteries. Is it? He, he works. This is we were testing so not scripted. Oh, oh, actually, oh, we thought of this last night. Did we not tell you about this? No, I actually, no, what I the? didn't tell him. <laughs> I didn't know it moved. I'm not... So the whole idea here is you ask Yoda a question, and he'll give you somewhat of a response. We Yoda? use it for a lot of jokes. So he goes, Yoda, can I ask a question? Ask a question. Should. Answer, I will. Yes or no. What do you think the new Star Wars movie will be? Good or bad? No. Oh, there you go! So, no, Yoda has it. Yoda. Yoda. How do I get his You have to say, Yoda, can I ask a question? Yoda, can I ask you a question? Oh, no. I think he's having a brain fart. Yoda, can I ask you a question? He's tired. <laughs> <laughs> that section idea is something we're going to add to every show. So if you guys have a question that you'd like to ask an overpriced talking doll, uh, be sure to put it in the comments below, and whichever one that we think is the best, we'll add to the next episode. If Yoda, that, yes. And maybe he'll answer it. If, if that was anything to go by, that was 
it's not gonna work. He just doesn't like you. No, no, he didn't. Yeah, he well, was. I hate Yoda. So. We were asking him questions yesterday. Well, that was the fastest no response I've ever seen Yoda give. No. Yeah. He's like, no. Like, oh my god, he's gonna hate this movie. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that takes us into our next topic, which is what Matt brought up in the last video, is... Why he's wrong about the John Wick series. You sound like my parents. So everyone pretty much knows the John Wick series right now as kind of a staple mark for action in terms of how it's captured, how the stunt work is portrayed, and it has been quoted by several stuntmen as stunt porn. So Matt, you said you had some issues with it. We're kind of very interested to see what they are and then yell at you. Okay. <laughs> First John Wick movie is great. It's just action, simple, and that was that. I will agree with you on that. Yeah. And then in the second and third ones, they just, you know, it was supposed to be a trilogy. Oh, yeah. I'll... I would have liked for it to stay a trilogy. The third. And I would have well. preferred it to be a single standalone movie because it was just great on its own. And then they add all this, like, secret government assassin stuff. They that just really that. muddles it. Yes, that, they did. No, no. It's, they, they expanded upon it. They introduced that that is the world he is reaching yes, into and that's in the first all one. They I do needed also to... kind of agree with Matt, though, that's... that it was like a, it was all a mystery. Yes, all they I needed to explain. That, but they did kind of over-explain some of it. Yeah. The second one does, I feel, enough world building in terms of showing just a little bit more of the clothing, the mm -hmm. the handshakes, the secret society aspect of it. The third one, I feel, goes off the deep end, and it's essentially just a tutorial mission. Yeah, the third there, one's Nothing really awesome. happens in the third movie. Yeah, like, it, I, it, still, I still enjoyed the The third first one movie. was still the best, uh, though. Honestly, the second one is my least favorite. I like, the first one, it, it's my favorite, then the third one, then the second one. Really? And I'm still giving all of those five out of fives. So, sorry, five out of seven. Mm. That's I, not a call out to you. You just don't know what that means. Yeah, it's a Mimi thing. It's Mimi. pronounced Mimi. 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 Anyway, Mimi. yeah, so the first one was great. I love the second and third one. Like, it's just good. But, like, I would have preferred if it was just a standalone. I was hoping that the third one. Yeah, like, I it like that mystery. Like, they. Built upon it, whatever, it is what it is now. There's a fourth one. And, yeah. there's, and it also kind of point. bumped Keanu Reeves' career back into like the spotlight because there's a Matrix 4 coming out now. Now everyone's just no. so breathtaking. <laughs> we're, we're all going to be like just... Oh, you're breathtaking. Breathtaking, breathtaking ah. nature. Well, that's because yeah. Keanu Reeves is a Canadian national treasure. Yeah. Like, really, his acting is nothing. I'm waiting for his <laughs> entire life to be shrunk down into a Canadian heritage moment. Yeah. <laughs> He's just a good person, though. You can't You can't hate you him. Can't, you can't hate him. Can't him. Can't no. like, he's not a good actor. No, but he's a good person. <laughs> yeah. He <actually> has <laughs> he's, a, just, he's a good person. You just, you gotta love him. You can't a great act, role. you gotta love him. Oh, true. Yeah. I feel that the third no. film originally was intended to be the end, but then they realized, hey, we can really milk this train because yeah. the third one actually had the highest grossing box office of all three movies oh, i i also trend, thought really. though that if the third one was going to be as successful as it was they were absolutely going to go yep this is basically the better bond go i can't wait till they hobbs and shot it oh please please, please don't please don't make it so ridiculous that it's just no replace eventually focus on another bunch of people in the same universe. Well, there has been the idea of the Continental show being pitched around for the last, like, ever since the first movie came out, and it's been in pre-development ever since. I don't like that idea. It, if it was a miniseries, like ten episodes. I don't know, I just think that's gonna go back into the problems that Matt John has Wake. with it. No. John, well, now they're the over-explaining every detail of the Cat's world. out of the bag, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's already now that's what it is, so if they decide to make a miniseries, like... But as long as it's good, but like the the movies are based like they're good because of the action pieces and all that. I don't think a miniseries would be able to emulate that. The only no, show that they I they have to get really unique and creative with every single I, scene in every movie. Yeah, the only show <laughs> that I would say that can possibly be, be comparable in terms of circumstance, stunt work, action is Into the Badlands by AMC. Didn't watch it. That show does have pretty impressive fight choreography in every single episode for a miniseries show. So if they were able to put a lot and a lot of their budget into the stunt sequences, not really hire really good actors, but hire very good stunt coordinated actors and one decent actor, that's how I feel budget wise they could attain. As long as Amazon Prime does it, not Netflix. <laughs> I don't know. I just like to follow the trend that whenever something does well and it makes money, 
they ruin it. They just drag it out? Yeah, they drag it out to get every penny from it, and they ruin it. Um, oh, that's good business. That's kind of what... I, th- I think if they made a miniseries, it would be more politically focused and less on the specific mm, actions. Yeah, I don't... They, they kind of derive from the like the, the plot of the movies, but they they'd have to change it. Yeah, yeah. I don't I don't see a, like a continental miniseries being an action based miniseries at all. I'm not They're more focused on the it. whole like that'd be my preference. You, you would be looking at the assassination, uh, like where do these guys go? Um, how maybe the series is how do you get into this lifestyle? Because we don't really know that based on Well no apparent, according to the knows. movies every single citizen of New York is an assassin. There are a shit ton more assassins than you would expect them oh, to be. including the children. And they've all got phones from the 90s. Yeah. I found that kind of a cool a- a aesthetic idea that the contract callers are well, all keep, women keep using it the off old... the grid. Yeah. Well, yeah. Even though they own the police. Mm. Which they said. It's kind of... Yeah, it's, it would be international. I do stuff. like that it like, separates itself joking. from our world. Like they don't talk about anything that's happening in the real world. They just all about this world? dark yeah. other world. That's all it's about. They never yeah. kind of put in real life, current day politics. They never put any of those news reels. They keep it really it. tight. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like they keep in Toy. their world, their universe. <laughs> I feel that the first two movies are pretty solid. The first one is the best one because of how well edited it is, how well constructed it was, and it made you actually care about the villain character in that film, too. Like, when he says, oh, fuck, it's John Wick, you're like, damn. With a fucking pencil! And then the second... Then they elaborated on that. Uh, The second I was so glad when they actually actually killed someone. Ruby Rose? Oh, she got killed in it, though. Good. Didn't yeah. like that they Good. The second one had the best stunt work, I felt. Especially that opening scene with the car. Oh, yeah, that was great. That was insane. That jump where the car actually comes up over the ramp, hits the water, and starts curving, there actually was a potential, because the camera was like this, and the car's coming like this. If the car had fucked up, it would have gone right into the camera. So there was risk with doing that stunt, but they still did it. And Keanu was stunt driving. Double camera, That's the reason why you gotta love Keanu Reeves. He does his own stunts. Oh, no, it's... The second one had also has the best gunfight in my opinion, which is the one that's in the tunnel. The tunnel one is fucking fantastic, especially when um, he, when he puts the guy up against the wall with the empty shotgun, realizes it. Oh, the catacomb. The shell. That was cool. Yeah, that I was yeah, yeah. Like the club one in the first, in the first movie. Oh yeah, yeah. the club one's great. Yeah, but and you also see him lose too. In the mm-hmm. third one, when you're in the theaters and you hear the shotguns go off, you just felt that in your in your core. Well, when you're fighting the guys with the armor. Yeah, remember in that that final scene when oh, he's, he's pumping like, how many super shot fucking gun? bullets I had to put? Yeah, in here? well, I was an IMAX and it was just like, <laughs> oh, bass. I was just like, oh my god, <laughs> it's like I can feel it. They were taking on division <laughs> enemies because they were all bullet sponges. Yeah, just. <laughs> I'm kind of indifferent now to seeing how the series goes because I was expecting three to be the end, but. Also, like, I hate myself, because I don't want another one to come out, but I'm going to love it. I, I, I'm going to hate gonna that, and then they're going to come out, and come out, I'm going to love it. So what other stand. problems do you have with this series? Well, that was, that was, that was it. Yeah, that was I wish it would just stay at one film. Like, I understand why they went further in there. At mm-hmm. least they did it well. Yeah. I, just, I, I, I liked the mystery. It was just such a simple film. It was just like, yeah, it was awesome. Remember that? The first one was very mysterious. Yeah. And it didn't it's like gold coins, it's a continental. When the cop like, rolls up, and he's like... Hey, John. Rough night? <laughs> You'd say that. <laughs> you just, working again? Yes, yeah. you're working again. That's the, uh, yeah, just that presence he has within this whole world that everyone knows who he is. And uh, he's like Michael Jordan of killing people. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually a pretty good description of that. <laughs> you're tired to go try baseball and sucked at it. I mean, generally, as an assassin, you don't want to be <laughs> well known. Well, so like, instead, John Wick would go to fishing or something. No, he went to and got married, and that didn't work out. Oh yeah, <laughs> kind of. So he went back to killing. You know, when I went to go watch John Wick two, my expectations have been so extremely high for it that I actually had to bring them down in anticipation to watch the movie. Because if I had gone in with those high expectations, fucking none of it, none of it would have been acceptable for me. It. It was the first movie did leave such a great impression. I thought the first movie was gonna be shit. Just watching the trailers, like this looks like a yeah. The, when you watch the trailer of that movie, you instantly think, "Great, another action movie." Yeah, and then and it's it's just, not. 
I completely missed John Wick coming out, and I didn't see it until you guys watched it. I watched uh, a review was, of someone. I watched was. Chris Duckman's review, I think, a few days before, and he was just like, he was blown away by it too, and I'm like, okay, I'll give this a watch. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I was blown away. I love that movie. Yeah, well, going into watching it, you guys were both telling me it was so good, and I was not disappointed from the first movie. Oh, yeah, very, very good. And then, like, that song, right? I just keep playing that song all the, the time. Song really Think good. by Khalid. Yeah. Uh, Khalid? Is that someone? I can't so, pronounce it. What? DJ Khaled! No, it's not, it's just not the middle one. Do you remember the song from the. Dun, 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 dun. dun. That's actually got probably the best kill in that movie where he oh, stabs yeah. the dude and death and like cold death eye stares him as the dude is sliding down the wall and his life is exasperated and he's just like mm, okay i i think my favorite non-deaths are it, when he stabs his buddy and goes consider professional courtesy leaves him on the train oh yeah um and in the third one with the samurai that fight where he's like they're they're battling so hard and such a great you talking fight. about when he fights the two dudes no uh, oh, no the, the last last the, guy the last oh. last guy oh i that's... also like the two dudes well because they're from the raid yeah. well that's not why i haven't seen the raid so. my favorite part in the second movie is when they gave ruby rose no lines because they knew her acting skills <laughs> see it's like she can't act and she made her deaf or mute yep. and now we got that moment they coming. made her mute or, it's politically yeah. incorrect. I think it's nonverbal. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Triggered. Oh, how, how do you, how do Are you, you sure it's with not sign language? language? I don't know. <laughs> Triggered. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Who's for the next one? Knows anything about the fourth Matrix movie? Me, absolutely nothing. Okay. I okay. thought that they were done. I'm kind of surprised that they're giving the Wachowskis money again. Um, so the Matrix trilogy is like my closet pleasure. Uh, I just why why, like, why I, would it be a closet? Oh my! Sure. It's my favorite movie it's series French. of all time. There's no so reason it should waves. Are we gonna do a marathon? In yes. <gasps> yeah. Let's be do, really entertaining the first let's one. Just do, fall asleep during the second one and just be like. Mm, the third are we one. gonna binge the animated? No, that's we don't. Oh, need that. oh the animatrix. Yeah. Some of those arcs are pretty good. Yeah, some, some of them are fucking weird. We some of them are awesome. incredibly fucking dark and stilter. The first, the first two. The first one's yeah. about how the machines big took over the world. That one's like yeah, that one. That one was the, my introduction to the Matrix. Fuck. Do you remember Conquerors by <laughs> I'm Fire? young, okay. Yeah. Remember when they did their little bit on Matrix in that I game? I didn't know. I didn't actually. I never played the game because I didn't have an N64. Oh, and there was like the lady squirrel and she had the trench coat on and the dodge bullets. Well, that, that, that game did make <laughs> a lot. Do you remember Conquerors by Fire? I do. Yeah, yeah. And they had the little Matrix bit. In there. I think yeah. they did. It's been a while. I remember yeah, Matrix <laughs> Online, where everyone was a variation of T1. Oh my god, that was such a horrible Neo. <laughs> XX <laughs> Neos. XX. Yeah. And now our third little topic here is we're going to talk about the final Joker trailer that just got released. Uh, these two just watched it for the first time, and admittedly, I'm Those actually... two. Yeah, these two. Yeah. yeah. Ooh, what kind of pointing is this? <laughs> no, not... No. Touch her, not me. She won't let me. You've been no for this. You and, let me. But yeah, definitely <laughs> this new trailer in comparison to the first trailer, this one is much more like action based and in the first one you really do pity you, him yeah, yeah you it, felt it, really sorry for he's his character he's quite pathetic in the first one uh, um and like when he's like pulling his face yeah. and he's crying the the makeup off of his uh off of his face and the just how skinny he looks how he's treated by everyone that laugh too the first trailer did seem more art housey than mm -hmm. the second trailer this one yeah it seems a little bit more in terms of like, kind of a blockbuster but not but I am admittedly intrigued, very intrigued. Look, that trailer absolutely intrigues me. I am very interested to see that movie, but now I have to go watch that second trailer, which I'll, I guess I'll do after the fact. The first trailer. They said the other trailer. Second trailer. It, Did I say second trailer? I'm wrong. It looks like, God forbid, it might have a bit of originality into it, which... Is nice to see with these kind of films. Todd Phillips even has said that this is not the Joker that you're used to. I know that they say that a lot of times with different characters and different movies, Every but... DC movie ever. Yes, I know. But, but I actually have hope promising. for this. It, it's, I have he no says, hope for this. He says it has nothing to do with the DC universe. That whatever the fucking a yeah, That's called a cop-out. Right what? Uh, it's not going to have any connection. It has nothing to do with the DC universe. 
Unless it's a major success. Exactly. And yeah. then, yep, this is a DC movie. True and true. Well, they yeah. did fire the the head of Warner Brothers, who was kind of the guy who was the main construct of the DCEU. And, um, the head of Warner Bros. was in charge of the DCU? Well, he was one of the major fact. He was one of the major decision makers, but then he got uh, fired for the doing some Me Too stuff, if I'm correct. So now there's someone else in charge. Um, I know that this movie had an absolute fucking nightmare of a production. Apparently the script was being rewritten every day. There was uh, background extras who sued the production because, as you can see, there's some filming done on a, a subway train. Yeah. They were forced to be on that train sometimes for seven to eight hours, and they were take, taking pisses off of the train. <laughs> hmm. they, so, sounds like a Joker movie. Sounds like a regular New York subway experience. Sounds like a joke of a production. <laughs> yeah. That was bad. <laughs> that was the point. So, that was worse than your usual work. I ones. think that Joaquin Phoenix looks very good in it. I think he's going to do very well. Oh, absolutely. I have no idea who that is. I'm assuming it's Joker. <laughs> yeah, I feel that... Bitch! It's a podcast! Turn off your phone! I think he's going to do his... Yeah something that's a little bit different in terms of what Ledger did. Um, it's definitely not going to be as hot topic-y as uh, Mr. Leto, so I'm kind of happy for but that. Leto was greatly hated, but I mean, he had a couple things go against him. like The DCEU. Uh, really and, then, and then two, e? they cut most of his part. Yes. Yeah, he was barely in that movie but and he, everybody He filmed him. a <laughs> Fuck ton more than that. Apparently something on like, like no. an hour of his yeah. footage was cut out of uh, like, Suicide what the Squad. Fuck? I I did kind of look forward to his representation of Joker, but yeah, we didn't like, get did, enough of it. You, oh, you, oh. you didn't get enough of it, and I think I that's really the true of it. Yeah. I just was being kind of indifferent to him. He was barely in the movie, yeah. and he kind of matched what they were going with with Harley Quinn, I felt. But, mm. uh, I think he was trying to be too much of something new well no in the original in the original like script like joker and um you know what's her it, nuts it's harley answer. quinn wait had um the... huh zuzu shut up boomer so the zuzu joker... you want a treat shut up joker and harley quinn had a very abusive relationship which they're showing in all the, in the movie and then they're like oh people aren't gonna like that they want to have the whole lovey dovey <gasps> thing and so they cut out all the pieces and like changed uh, certain scenes around so that it would be more of like a proper relationship that people would love like the helicopter scene He actually pushed her out. Yeah, it just kind of romanticized because he didn't music. but they changed it to him You go the helicopter's blowing up. Oh, well, fine. He the Joker into, when he pushes her into the acid and he jumps in too. Right? Yeah, like all that stuff They just made it all lovey-dovey and it's yeah, so he psychotically he evil <laughs> I so that's what I'm saying. I like that Joaquin's Joker looks like he's not forced. He, like you were saying, is a representation of mental illness. Um, it has, looks fun. It seems like they might touch on that as a. I thing. think it's gonna get dark as fig. Absolutely. Well, from the, the first trailer, man. Like even darker than the DC yeah. has oh, ever been. Darker than Batman. So much darker. I'm Wayne Bat. I hope it's good. Sure. <laughs> I hope. That I it, hope it's good too, but I don't want to hope for it. Maybe I'll be pleasantly surprised. That would be nice. To be pleasantly surprised by a DC movie because the last time we had a positive reaction to anything from them was Wonder well, Woman. Yeah, some people like Shazam. I never oh, seen it. I, never I, I haven't seen it, so I can't have an opinion. I have zero Shazam. interest in seeing that movie. It was funny. You also watch what? a lot more movies than we do. That's true. You fucking nerd. No. Oh. I'm gonna go watch my anime, anime now. That that concludes this podcast. Thank you guys for listening. If you have any suggestions of what you'd like us to talk about, leave them in the in the comments below. Also, if you want to ask, does Podbean even have comments? Yes, it does. Found that out. Great, good job, Podbean. <laughs> <laughs> Nailing it, Podbean. Putting a put a smile on my face and uh, money in my pocket. Snickers money. <laughs> Snickers this, we money. unfortunately don't have a non-real sponsor as well this time. We'll take you noodle cup. But we'll yeah, we'll take you noodle cup. You never turned down noodle cup. Everyone never turned down noodle, noodle cup. cup. All right, we starving. Before it gets weirder. <laughs> All right, guys. Bye. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Stay cheeky.